I'm coming out with a memoir of my childhood years in music after the first of the year. I'm going to read a couple of pages from the memoir, Crossing Bridges, about the best present I ever received as a kid. Benny Thomason, my legendary fiddle teacher, gave it to me. From the memoir. I had more than outgrown my more recent $200 fiddle, and I needed a better one to keep up with my progress. My fiddle was on the smaller side, shorter by just about a half inch in length. But it's remarkable how much difference that it can make when you're holding it under your chin. It was time to upgrade, considering my new height especially. During the following weekend down at Benny's, my mother stated that it was time for a new fiddle. Benny was a little bit of a fiddle trader and repairman himself, not nearly as bellicose as Dick Barrett granted, but Benny did have all kinds of old fiddles he picked up and traded for at the local contests, and they were all over his trailer home. Fiddles were spilling out of his front room closet from under the couch, out from under the bed, and a few of them hanging right there on his trailer wall. Suspended from Benny's living room wall was a new addition to his collection, an outlandish looking violin by any description. It easily caught my eye. You couldn't avoid it. I was gawking at an unsightly white painted fiddle, perhaps even more soiled than my baby blue jacket. What is that? I asked Benny. I believe you might like that old fiddle, Mark, Benny grinned. Why don't you take it down there and give it a try? Instantly, I fell in love with the old white fiddle. I could not put it down. A big-sized fiddle, it was much louder than mine. It rang out with enormous overtones that I had not experienced before. Where did this white fiddle come from, I asked. We took a seat while Benny told us the whole story. Benny had been fishing with a neighbor earlier that week when they returned to his acquaintance's barn to clean their fish and tackle, Benny spotted a white painted fiddle hanging on the barn wall. It had neither strings nor pegs, neither a bridge nor tailpiece. It was merely a barn decoration. But Benny could tell right away that it was very much a real instrument. Benny queried his neighbor about it. What would you take for that old white fiddle hanging up there? Benny thought he could use it for parts. Maybe the neck or the back could help him repair fiddles he was working on. His neighbor began eyeing one of Benny's fishing rods. Give me that one right there, he said, and you can take that fiddle with you. Once back at the trailer, Benny started to look this old white fiddle over more carefully. The top had some small cracks, so that part was probably unusable for another fiddle but the neck looked good and the back was in fine shape. He suspected it was a 19th century instrument and it was leaning towards being German or Czech. It didn't have a label, but of course the paint job scraped away any real value an original instrument would otherwise have. As he was about to strip the paint off and dismantle the white fiddle entirely, he thought better of it. Benny glued up the top found some pegs that fit, and with the care of a dutiful craftsman, prudently cut a sound post and a bridge for it. Finally, he strung up the fiddle. Benny went to all those lengths just in case the white fiddle sounded much better than it looked. Well, it certainly did. Benny unearthed a cannon of an instrument, one that possessed a massive and resonant sound. He was well satisfied. He tried to clean it up a bit more and got it ready for my next visit. A fiddle that had hung outdoors for years in a damp, cold barn and painted with an enamel coating for a barn decoration became my principal instrument. Benny gave this magical white fiddle to me without a second thought. From that point on, fiddlers could always tell when the kid from Seattle arrived at a fiddle contest. The sound of the white fiddle carried so very far. Folks could hear me play it from clear across the field.
The old white fiddle could also cut through a stage mic like nothing else too. With the commonplace Sure PA systems found at most fiddle contests of the day, I was now twice as loud as the old timers. That was disconcerting for them. I was ready to be just bigger in every way. I didn't care about the whippersnapper that mom and dad were sad to see disappear. Since I was jamming and performing with adults anyway, I wanted to be at their level, a big kid, a big repertoire, and a big fiddle with a huge sound. I had never felt better about my future, more than I did on the day I got a hold of that old white fiddle. Armed with my new eyesore, an instrument that could make the least unsuspecting person turn away from it at first sight, the fiddle allowed me to believe and to imagine that I could get ahead of Dick Barrett and Herman Johnson. My playing skyrocketed during my school year of 1974 to 75. Mark is becoming the best fiddler in the country, Benny told my mother. He's going to win every fiddle contest in the country on this white fiddle right here. In Mark O'Connor's hands, a fiddle becomes more than a wooden instrument. It is the pen of a poet, the canvas of an artist, the means of communication from a musical genius. Whether in live performances or as one of Nashville's most in-demand session musicians, Mark O'Connor has found his place as a world-class musician. So much so that the Country Music Foundation asked if he would turn over the fiddle he used when he won four national fiddling championships plus three grand national honors. O'Connor gladly agreed. I've seen a lot of places and, and a lot of playing and, and as you can see it's painted white and, and I've got signatures all over it from the great fiddle players who inspired me all, all along. The fiddle was a gift from an early mentor when O'Connor was just 13. This afternoon, he willingly parted with it at the Hall of Fame before a crowd that included Chet Atkins, who knows a thing or two about good instrumentalists. He's just an amazing musician and a, such a great credit to Nashville and the music scene. Do you feel like in the long run that he is going to be regarded among the greatest fiddle play, uh, violin and fiddle players of history? He already, he already is in my book. Before the ceremony was completed, there were a few more things to take care of. One more autograph from former Hank Williams fiddler Jerry Rivers. And he had to play it one more time. And then he handed the fiddle over. Fortunately, he has another. Mm -hmm. 